But uh, yeah, looking at the dailies this morning, let's start off with the standard where we have uh, the uh, headline is standoff questions haunting Kenyans. If we can just this move that, this up a little bit. There you go. On the standard this morning, we have some of the questions uh, that uh, Kenyans are asking and the standard has done an in-depth um, analysis weighing from different perspectives. Well, and some of those questions are to do with, first of all, the poll date. Will there be an election of, on October the 26th? Yeah, that's a question on uh, the lips of most Kenyans. The answer to that question depends on what side uh, one individual stands on. As per Jubilee right now, they're insisting that yes, their candidate is on the ballot, mm -hmm. other candidates have been brought on the ballot, there is going to be an election according to Jubilee on 26th of October. Right. NASA on the other side is saying no, we have withdrawn. And they insist that the legal implications of that withdrawal means it has triggered a requirement for a fresh elections with fresh nominations. So depending on where you stand, if the Jubilee argument uh, sails through and indeed uh, the elections are held on 26th and their candidate is on the ballot and other fringe candidates also are on the ballot to the exclusion of candidate Raila Odinga, then the luckiest situation is a presidential petition after those elections are held since the areas which are perceived to be NASA strongholds, there is likely to be a boycott, a very large boycott of those elections. Mm -hmm. So still, ultimately, when it happens, there is going to be a petition. Yes, and uh, well, that boycott you're talking about is also one of the questions that yes. appears here. What happens mm -hmm. if some of the areas fail to vote? And uh, of course, that would be envisaged to happen in the NASA strongholds with their uh, NASA candidate, Raila Odinga, having uh, pulled out of the election and boycotting. Uh, well, the question is, what happens if some of the areas uh, fail to vote? Again, this is, of course, after the as per the Constitution, requires that there must be voting in all the 290 constituencies. Yes, certainly. So a plain and clear reading of the constitution says that there shall be an election of the president in every constituency. And in terms of law, when the word shall is used, then it denotes a mandatory requirement. It is unlike when a uh, uh, the law uses may or someone is liable, but when shall is used, it denotes a mandatory requirement. And uh, the other time we looked that this exact scenario has happened. When we looked at the example of Thailand, 2013-2014, there were certain protests against the then uh, Prime Minister Thaksin Sinawatra. People uh, were not contented with certain laws the Prime Minister was passing. And the opposition first boycotted Parliament. Certain MPs resigned from Parliament. And that necessitated the Prime Minister to call a snap election. In those elections which were called, the opposition boycotted in the areas. They largely boycotted. And even when the Prime Minister was declared as the winner, a petition was taken to the Thailand Supreme Court by a, a law lecturer. And in its decision, the Supreme Court of Thailand held that it was a requirement that an election should take place in every constituency. And those elections were declared as null and void. So similarly, there is a possibility even if the election goes, goes on and there's a boycott in some certain areas, it will still land back to the Supreme Court for the Supreme Court to make a determination on that issue. All right, and uh, well, another question that comes up, which is in the standard, and get yourself a copy of the standard to see what it's all about, is Form 24A. There was Form 34B, Form 34A. Now we have Form 24A. Get yourself a copy of the standard and uh, just get an uh, idea of what that is all about. But let's move on to...